So as you can see, I've got a bias build update of um, the 6th of the 26th of June and of this video, 2017. This is of this build, 2017. And um, yeah, at the moment, CPU temp still at 48 degrees. It's still like the newest BIOS that you can get for the MSI um, Gaming M7 ACK motherboard. That's, that's quite a mouthful. But yeah, and it also works with the GTX 970, so you can still update with the build and it'll still work and it's still got visuals and stuff like that. Um, I am still going to try to overclock it with um, the overclocking feature because um, people are not all clued up of how to overclock and stuff like that and I don't want to make this video too complicated and too long. I'm going to probably do that in the next, uh, next video. If you want to see all of the overclocking in details and stuff like that and how you can fine tune stuff and make sure you've got the voltage right and you're doing the offset and then you want memory overclocking, you want to overclock the graphics card and you want to do RAID 0 and get like the M2 sort of um, performance with your two SSDs and stuff like that. Leave it down in the comments down below and then uh, yeah, I'll get that video set up and that's going to probably take me a long time. So I'm really unhappy about it right now because I shouldn't have said it but I like working hard so why not? Who cares? But anyway, let's go through uh, what we've got here. So S7, nothing's different. I can see everything's still the same. Do -do -do -do. Advanced. Let's go into overclocking features actually. Let's see what's different about that. Oh gosh. Expert. Right, all cause. Oh yeah, you can turn off all like, say if you want to uh, do a synthetic um, test like with one single core, you can do that with this. Or you could have a few cores on or overclocking, whatever. Because some programs work better when they haven't got as many cores and some programs work really well when they've got loads of cores. So you can do like loads of different tests if you're that advanced level. If you're not that advanced level, don't worry about it. Um, what else we got? Everything still seems to be exactly the same. Like a peripheral, loads of stuff on here. Peripheral, 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 peripheral. Right, so got the flash mode, I did a BIOS. Security is still the same. Boot override, all that's still the same. Advanced. PCI Express one. What have we got? Four lanes. Okay, that's still the same. That's still the same. What I've noticed different is I've got blue light under the graphics card. That wasn't there before. When I updated the BIOS, that's there. So I don't know what that's there for. Uh, hardware monitor, anything different about that? Any temperature drop? So CPU is at 49 degrees. It has been on all night, but then I had to um, cut the computer off to obviously update the BIOS. And updating the bus is a little bit different than what you would do, say, on an Acer motherboard. You'll um, grab the file, download it from the internet, and you'll put it on a USB stick, use it as FAT32 uh, format, and then put the file on there, then change the name from MSI. Uh, what is it? I can't remember now. It's, I'll leave it in the comments down below, but it's MSI. Something. I think it's. Dot, what is it? Oh, I can't remember, I'll remember though. Anyway, you change the code and then you put it back into the USB port on the back of the I.O. bracket on the back of the computer and then you press uh, the BIOS uh, flash button and it will flash, but the only thing I don't like about it, it's kind of like really fainted compared to the Asus one. The Asus one's like a bright green one and it's blue and it tells you what's going on. It's like vivid enough that you can see it from across the room. This is like really faint and you can't really see if it's on or not. So, um, yeah, but anyway, it does work. And what happens is the computer will come on and don't be afraid and don't try and turn it off because you try and turn it off, you could corrupt your whole, like, motherboard and then you have to send it back by RMA. But anyway, other than that, you press the BIOS button and that reflects back to uh, the new BIOS changes that you've done. And then, hey, press that, it should work and everything like that. All I know at the moment, a GTX 970, every motherboard I kind of done with a BIOS update was not working on certain manufacturers, and those are the top predecessor, predecessor motherboards. And this is um, quite a new motherboard. This is X299. Obviously, loads of people have been complaining about certain things about um, phases and MOSFETs and chokes and stuff like that, and capacitors, whether it's good for overclocking. Well, I'm going to... I'm going to test that out now, but anyway, as I was saying, CPU is 49 degrees, system is 37 degrees. In here, I would say it's probably about 22 degrees in this room right now. 
and um, it's not really reflecting it as much. I've got the AIO water cooling unit at the top and the fan curve is as you can see it's just on smart mode so I haven't even ramped the van, uh, fans up. But what I do want to say is I use um, the Be Quiet uh, TF2 Dark Rock CPU air cooler which got 150 TDP and uh, when I went to do a test, a stability test, it actually just went into uh, like, it just shut down, it was too much for it. So I put a 240 mil, is it 240 or was it 120? 240. So it's two, no, 280, sorry. 280 AIO, and um, the fan curves are just on smart fan mode, so no uh, change in the fan curve at the moment. And i had done stability tests before I'd done the bias update, and it was fine. Um, heat, No heating issues, really. I saw a maximum temp. You know what? I've got my book right here. This will be quite cool. So what do we do? So when I was using Cinema, Cinebench, I got... 1743 of uh, eight cores to 16 threads at 3.6 gigahertz and overclocking on the 7820x <laughs> CPU, and then on the AMD it was 1635 eight core 16 threads at 3.8 gigahertz, and um, you could see there was quite a bit of a difference. But the temperature was slightly hotter on the AMD version, but they're both eight cores and 16 threads. But it shows the 7820x is not really ready and it still beat the um, AMD uh, 1600X. And then on the graphics card, same graphics card, GTX 970 at 103, 29 frame rates per second on eight core 16 threads at 3.6 gigahertz uh, for the Intel. And then six core and 12 threads on uh, the 16, no, sorry, that was for the 1700. And then the 1600X, that's what I got, uh, um, it was overclocked to four point Five gigahertz, five four point gigahertz. Just to make <coughs> sure, yeah. GTX 970 got 111.92 frame rates per second, which was higher than what the 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 Intel 7820X got. So I'm not really quite sure what actually happened there, but um, yeah, it failed on the ADA stability test. And temps were hitting 87 to 96 degrees before the BIOS update, and yeah, it was uh, pretty awful. I don't think this uh, motherboard is quite ready to do things. It's got like 10 plus one plus one phases on there, and it's got a four pin and an eight pin for EPS connector for st stability overclocking. But um, that was with nothing overclocked and it failed. But I don't know where it failed because it needs water cooling or custom loop at least to run this rather than a uh, CPU air cooler. But anyway, you, you can see the test anyway. So. Anyway, so we've got a system at 37 degrees. MOSFETs at 45 to 46 degrees. Uh, the chipset is running at 38 degrees. Uh, PCI graphics, so uh, that's in one, 34 degrees. M.2 and the other M.2 is running at 34 degrees, yet I haven't got them populated. So are they producing heat that's unnecessary in this case? And obviously it's a fractal design case, it's got airflow at the front, it has got um, a 120mm flan blowing cool air uh, from the intake over to the graphics card, exhausting through the back and through the two AE fans, it's exhausting heat from the top. But where the graphics card is, it's blowing heat and then it's kind of rotating. I really should do a smoke test. It would be so much easier for me rather than explaining it. I could just show you. But I'll probably do it in the next video. If you want to see that, leave it in the comments down below. But anyway, that's all about the BIOS right there. And the BIOS is kind of, well, other than if I put temperature like uh, tabs actually on the motherboard, that's where I can get more accurate readings. But that's kind of average readings what we're getting right now. So... Yeah, and the CPU is running at 895 rotations per minute. Um, the pump, I don't even know what the pump runs at. I think it's something like 1.5 litres per hour or something like that. But when you leave it on for a half hour, then obviously it starts to heat up and then we can get a proper, well, more of an accurate reading. I wouldn't say we couldn't get too accurate because we haven't got a proper lab here. But... Just to clarify, this water cooling unit is around 110, 120 pound, and that's what you're gonna kind of look in at to work this system. And I thought I had 64 gigs in it, and it's come up with 48, so I'm not too sure.
So, I did not need to go into advanced mode to do any overclocking, but I'm overclocked to five gigahertz, as you can see, with 48 gigabytes of uh, memory, which should be 64. I don't know what happened, but um, I haven't really got time because uh, I've got to get this review out so you can see it as soon as possible. But anyway, we're at 62 degrees. My board temperature is at 36 degrees. But all I did is I just spun that little knob all the way up to the top and it's given me five gigahertz. Now, at 62 degrees, I'm not sure. I don't think it's gonna be, st it's not gonna have the stability enough. I think it's gonna cut off, but let's go and find out. It's got up to date BIOS now. Everything's up to date, all the drivers and everything like that. But anyway, when you overclock, obviously you're gonna have to keep turning it off, getting a blue screen. Cause if you're not getting a blue screen and your computer's not cutting off, then that means that you're not doing the overclocking right. So the whole point about overclocking is that you have gotta run into errors, run into problems, be able to fix that problem and then have something that's stable. So let's go into Windows and see if it actually posts. I hope we are going to go straight into Windows, hopefully. I'll pause the game capture. And at the moment we've got a flashing RGB sensation. It's got RGB like everywhere, all for the graphics cards, the chipset, the memory on all the sticks, uh, the chokes and the IO bracket and the AIO water cord in and we've got a blue light which is just a blue light and then we've got red lights and the reset and power which this is definitely a good overclocking motherboard until when I find out if it's gonna still stay alive at 5 gigahertz well no this is gonna crash straight away I know it is um, yeah it's definitely gonna crash but let's see if we can do any test anyway before we do that let's try Cinema 4D, Cinebench I mean, oh no it's going to crash, it's going to crash, that's 100 degrees and 99 degrees, wow, 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 I've never seen the CPU go to 100 degrees until it's going to blow up, Intel I'm very sorry, or oh, MSI I'm very sorry as well. <laughs> Is it going to complete it though? So overclocking it to 5 gigahertz has actually made it more slower than what it should be. So I'm guessing there's heat throttling, so they have to dull back or mess around with the offsets and stuff. But yeah, that temperature hit 100 degrees, 99 degrees, that is really hot, even lower than the 39, 30K. That is like, so we've got 5, 4, Three. That's three generations old and it's gone down even lower. You've seen it here today. It went to 100 degrees, 99 degrees, 96 degrees over all of them cores and threads and basically it still managed to carry on going. So I can't really say the CPU, even though the CPU runs really hot and really got 280 um, AIO in there, it still was okay, if you know what I mean. Because if it was AMD, Ryzen CPUs, if you got even to 85 degrees, it would shut down. And I haven't done any tweaking in there. This was just turning it up. And as I was trying to explain to you, I wouldn't really use the uh, volume knob to turn to do anything with overclocking. But I think it's a little bit, it's, it's a good idea, it's a good thought. It's easy, it's quick, and you could see that it was okay. But it throttles down, it definitely throttles down. And obviously I've got GTX 970 in there and I've got loads of memory. I think the equipment that I've got is not completely balanced, but you can't say whether it's balanced or not because you build computers how you want to build computers. You build it for gaming, so you can buy the most expensive graphics card. Well, near enough, you can go up to like 900 to 1,000 pound on a graphics card, on one graphics card, and then or you can buy another three of them, so it's four of them, and that's 4,000 pound, but then you can buy like a motherboard that costs 60 quid. Uh, and then you can buy a CPU that is around 30 quid and it'll still be alright for gaming but if you're going to do things like multitasking then you're looking at 500 pound for CPU to like right up into like the double figures kind of thing then more graphics card or one graphics card and yeah anyway if you like this video if it's helpful please like me and like me I'm only joking just like the video dislike if you disliked it leave a comment down below share this video and I'll see you next one and yeah, thanks for watching.